Hi everybody, welcome to Ingvid.com. I'm Adam. In today's video, I want to show you ways to ask for and give directions. For example, if you're going to travel to another country or travelers are in your city and they need some help, you can help them. It's a little bit of a beginner lesson, so I'll speak a little bit more slowly. And I'm going to give you a set of questions, I'm going to give you some vocabulary. And the most important thing you need to understand is the verbs that you're going to have to use in order to uh, help somebody find their way. And I'll look at those in a moment. So we're going to start with the questions. Now, again, in English, just as in any other language, there are many ways to ask for anything, really, right? But these are the main questions that you need to know in order to get directions and in order to understand someone who uh, needs directions from you. So the for more common, most common question is, how can I get to whatever place is? How can I get to the train station? How can I get to the museum? How can I get to whatever is a tourist attraction in a city, your city, other cities, etc.? Or more direct, where is something? Now, a little bit you have to keep in mind then that if you're in certain countries, for example, in Canada, you can't really go up to a person and say, where is the train station? Canadians are a little bit more polite, I guess you could say, a little bit softer. So it's better to have an indirect question, like this one. Can you tell me where something is? Or can you tell me how to get to? Now, very important to remember, if you're asking a direct question, like just the question, where is the place? If you're asking an indirect question, this is actually the question word, can or do. So this is now turned into a noun clause, right? So then where something is. And the is comes after the place you're going to. The is comes before the place you're going to. So make sure you understand the correct structure of the question. And, but ideally, use the indirect question. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more polite. So can you tell me how to get to the train station? Do you know where the train station is? Or you can use both of these clauses with either question. Now, another way to ask is what's the fastest way to get to? You don't actually even have to use to get. What's the fastest way to the train station is okay, but to get makes it a little bit more clear. And when you ask someone what's the fastest way, they understand that you want directions and they will explain to you how to get to the place. Now, very, very important that you study these words, okay? All of these are prepositions of place. You must understand how they are used and when they are used in order to understand directions. So when someone is explaining it to you, they're going to use all of these words. And a few other things that I'll mention in a moment. So I kind of ran out of room, so I put past at the top, but past, go past the first building and the second building is the one you want. So past means like after, that's one. At or on the corner of A Street and B Street. At the corner means general area, on the corner means a specific corner. But again, that's a different lesson altogether. Both of these will work just fine. Kitty corner. So kitty corner is basically when you have a situation. So you, you have an intersection. Okay. If something is here, this is kitty corner, the opposite corner. This is simply across the street. This is kitty corner when you're going in a diagonal. Okay. So that's important to remember. Not everybody uses this uh, particular expression, but some people might use it. It's good to understand it. Next to, so next to, beside, same idea. Near, near is a little bit vague, so try not to use uh, near or close to, but sometimes it's good enough and you'll understand why in a moment. Not far from, same. In front of, in front of, behind, obviously. Across the street from, so across the street from, something. Uh, between, the bank and the library is the building you're looking for, so between two things. Make sure you always remember between and go together when you're talking about a relationship of place. 
uh, on the left or on the right. So if you're walking down the street, you will see that store on your right. You will see that store on your left, depending where it is. Uh, where are we? So now, if you come to North America, for example, Canada, the US, most of the cities here are based on a grid. A grid means that streets go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's very much like a tic-tac-toe map, it looks like. In Europe, streets go like bendy and winding and all over the place. So in Europe, they don't really use to the north, to the east, west, etc. In North America, they use this a lot because it's much easier to explain. Go north on 5th Avenue, head east on 8th Street, and you'll get to where you're going. So we use north, east, south, and west a lot. So make sure you understand how these uh, directions work. Mainly what you need to understand is where is north. So when you're standing on the street, always try to get an idea of where is north, and then you know all the other ones. It's, uh, this is called orientation. So when you go to a new city, become oriented with the layout of the, of the map, of the grid. Always get a map, figure out which way is north, and then you'll start to understand. So to the north means in the direction of north, on the west side. So sometimes somebody will say something is at the intersection, but you want to be more specific. So they will tell you it's on the north west side of the intersection because there are four. So if they want to specify, for example, if you're looking for a store, but the store doesn't have a sign on the street, it's inside a building, for example. So you'll say the, the store is, on the, is inside the building on the northwest corner in the basement. Go there and you'll find it no problem, okay? So you must understand all of these words in order to give and receive instructions and directions. Now, most importantly, you have to get comfortable with the verbs. So let's look at those next. Okay, so now we actually get to the hard part. This is where people sometimes get lost because remember, if you are giving instructions, you can stick to one or two verbs and just use it over and over again and people will understand. But when you are the one asking for instructions and you're asking a native English speaker, there's many ways to describe or to, to give directions to describe how to get somewhere. So be a little bit more aware of all the different ways we can uh, actually give you directions. So we're going to look at verbs. Now, mostly we're going to start with anything that is walkable. What this means is that you can actually walk to the place. It's not very far. Some places are too far. You may need to take a bus or a subway or a taxi, uh, etc. So if it's walkable, just give them very simple directions. Head or go. Head and go are both verbs and they essentially mean the same thing. Head straight, just basically go straight, means the same idea. Head up or down and the name of the street, if you know the name. Now, generally speaking, and again, in North America, where we have the grids, everything is in a line. Up means north, down means south. We don't really have uh, east or west. East or west, say east or west. So head up uh, Fifth Avenue, head down Fifth Avenue, depending on the direction you're going, or go down, go up. Head north on Fifth Street or uh, Main Street. Again, north, south, east, west. Go past, go past the uh, National Bank building, which you'll, you'll see easily because it's a landmark, but I'll talk about that in a second. So head or go, very commonly used. Some people also use the verb follow. So follow this street until you get to, but again, that's a little bit more tricky because especially if, uh, if streets are straight and all that, that's fine. This is a little bit more common in non-grid cities. So follow this street because this street bends. So just stay on the street and follow the bends until you get to somewhere. Follow until. And then whatever is going to come up. 
Then there's turn. You can turn left, turn right, turn eastward, means in the direction of east. Turn south, you can say south or southward, east or eastward, both okay. Now you can also say take a right, make a left. These are only for left and right, that's why I put them in bracket. You can't say take south, take eastward, that doesn't work. Take a right basically means turn right. Make a left basically means turn left. This is especially for driving. So if you're driving and somebody is sitting next to you and giving you instructions, they'll say, okay, take a left over there. Make a right at the next street or turn. Also okay. Now, if the place you're going to is not walkable, is not within walking distance, then you have to give some more instructions. So take the number one line or number 10 line or whatever that, if there's a name for the subway line, Generally speaking, when we talk about line, we talk about, we're talking about subway or train, if it's above ground. Take the number three bus, I should put a the here. Take the number three bus. Buses have numbers, so we don't really use lines, we just say the number of the bus. Now, you have to be very careful about giving directions with bus or subway because in some countries, you might not be able to read the signs. If you're coming to an English speaking country, no problem. If you're going to other places, but are still using English to get around, you might not know the names. So it's helpful if somebody tells you how many stops to go, more or less. So go five stops, get off at the name of the station if you know it, okay? Notice we use go a lot. Now, sometimes you'll come to an intersection or you'll come to a particular place where you're on the wrong side, just cross the street or go across the street, go across the intersection, go across the park, whatever the case may be. Now, it's also very important that you understand the differences between uh, street names. We can say avenue, road, street, boulevard. These are the main names of streets. There are smaller streets that you don't really need to worry about at the moment. These are the main ones you're going to uh, come across. So turn, turn south at uh, 5th Avenue, turn left on uh, Main Street. You can also say on to. So this is again more for driving, turn on to Main Street and go straight or go east, whatever the case may be. Now, sometimes they're going to give you relative directions. They're going to tell you how to get to one place and then from this place they're going to give you further directions. So when you get to the intersection, when you get to the mall, when you get to the park, turn left, go straight, head down, look for. Look for is very very useful because now we're introducing landmarks. Landmarks are things or objects or situations that are very easy to see, very recognizable. The people who live in the place, everybody knows what this place is, so it's easy to point out. Now, landmarks can be buildings, and they're big, so they're easy to see. You can see them from a distance. They can be bridges in some places, like in San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge is a landmark. They can be monuments. These are special uh, constructions like to, rem uh, to remember a war, or fallen soldiers, or just a special person from history, like a president or a, a local hero, etc. It could be statues, it could be plaques, it could be all kinds of things. Some parks are landmarks. If they're in the middle of a city, there's only one big park, that's the one people will relate their directions to, or any other landmark. So, when you get to the park, cross the park, and on the other side, you will see and then, uh, so if you're looking for, then you will see this or look for the tall brown building and next to that is the place you're looking for, for example. Or, if you know that a place is a little bit difficult to get to, what you want to do is get the person moving in the general direction on the way to the place and then say, once you get to the park, Ask, ask again, ask somebody else for directions. Because if I try to explain to you from here what to do after you get to the park, it, you will be very confused. I'll just tell you, get to the park. 
then somebody else will tell you what to do next. That's the easiest way to do it. And when we, some people say you can't miss it. Now, people have a lot of problem with this word. Miss doesn't mean like something like, oh, you're longing for it. It's gone from you. You, you miss it. If your friend goes away for, from your city and you miss your friend, that's one thing. Here, miss means not notice. So you can't miss. It means it's impossible not to see it. And again, we're talking about uh, landmarks. So if you go to the park, go across the park, and you'll see a big brown building. You can't miss it. Once you see that big brown building, go to the left of it, go to the right of it, go behind wherever the situation may be. Okay? So there, there you go. Those are some key vocabulary and key expressions that you need in order to give and understand directions. Okay? Very important if you want to go traveling. And keep in mind, if you're going to tourist areas anywhere in the world, people there speak English. So they will be giving you these kinds of instructions. They've practiced doing this for the tourists, okay? And so that's it for today, just to get you started on directions. If you have any questions about any of this, please go to ingvid.com and there's a comment section you can ask me questions. I'll be happy to give you whatever answers I can. There's also a quiz that you can try to understand uh, what we learned here today. And uh, that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications of uh, future videos. And uh, come back next time. I'll give you more useful tips to improve your English journey. I'll see you again soon.